I give the call to the Honourable Rosetta Shahana. Thank, thank you. First of all, good afternoon, President, and congratulations to you on your appointment as President of the Legislative Council. I would like to thank you all for gathering here today. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, who are the traditional owners of this land on which we gather on today. And I would also like to take this opportunity to, to acknowledge all First Nation elders, past, present and emerging. I come to this place today as elected by the people of WA. I am honoured to serve our great state. I would like to thank the West Australian people for entrusting their confidence in both the WA Labor Party and in myself as the member representing the mining and pastoral electorate. I would like to start by introducing myself to you. My name is Rosetta Sahana, but I prefer to be called Rosie. I am an Aboriginal woman born and bred in Broome with family ties and connection across the West Australia, from the Kimberley through to the Murchison and Gascoigne regions. I'm a proud Ngarijan and Badi Jawi woman connected to the Gija and Gunyani tribes in the Kimberley and the Amiji in the south. It is a great honour knowing that the mining and pastoral electorate also covers the regions of where my family come from. This electorate is the largest and most diverse electorate in Australia. To represent the mining and pastoral electorate of WA is more than just a title to me. I have a strong personal connection to this, to this electorate I and I understand my responsibility to this electorate. I will now give you a snapshot of my upbringing to give you a sense of myself and my personal capacity. Firstly, I will acknowledge the anniversary of the Sorry Day today, 26th of May, and acknowledge the special event being held in Broome at the Kimberley Stolen Generation Sorry Day event. National Sorry Day remembers and acknowledges the mistreatment of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who were forci forcibly removed from their families and communities, which we now know as the Stolen Generations. Today is the anniversary of the presenting of the Bring Them Home report developed, sorry, de delivered by Sir Ronald Wilson, which was to be the game changer for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community and for Australia. The prominent, the the predominant aim of the forced removal of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children from their families was to absorb or assimilate children with mixed ancestry into the non-Indigenous community, which has challenged our very own well-being, identity and essence of our uniqueness within the WA community and the world as traditional owners. I would like to quote Sir William Dean, Governor General of Australia, in his submission to the National Inquiry present plight in terms of health, employment, education, living conditions and self-esteem of so many Aborigines must be acknowledged as largely flowing from what happened in the past. The dispossession, the destruction of lives were all related, the new diseases, the alcohol and the new pressures of living were all introduced. True acknowledgement cannot stop short of recognition of the extent to which present disadvantages flows from past injustice and oppression." Unquote. This goes to the very heart of many of the issues that are faced today and highlights the need for truth-telling, treaty and a voice to parliament. My father was a child of stolen generation. He was taken from his family up on the Gibb River Road, a pastoral station called Moonlight Valley Station on which the Salmon River in the northeast Kimberley. His mother was Aboriginal and his father an Indian from Karachi, India. After the tragic death of his father, he was taken away and sent to Beagle Bay Mission at the age of nine years old. For those of you that don't know Beagle Bay Mission, it's actually north of Broome up on the Dapier Peninsula. It is widely known as home of the stolen generation because many Kimberley kids that were taken away were sent there. It was there that he met and married his wife, my mother, Ottilia Paddy. My maternal grandmother, also a child of the stolen generation, was taken from Carnarvon in 1900 and sent on a ship to Beagle Bay Mission. 
her mother Aboriginal and her father Chinese. Like my father, she too met and married her husband, my grandfather at Beagle Bay. She never went back to her country, however, her family. Her family members travelled to Beagle Bay to meet and spend some time with her as she was the missing link to her family members. My father and my grandmother never complained about their circumstances. They made the best of what they had and never looked back. My father, a welder, he was a staunch Labour supporter and a union man. He was a very proud man and he raised his children the same way he was raised, strict, discipline, taught us family values and principles, the importance of having a job, and wanted nothing to do with handouts. I share this story with you all to highlight the fact that myself, like most of us West Australians, come from very humble beginnings, facing cir circumstances imposed on us from the policy of the day, and yet somehow we thrive and we never stop on pushing on. I've been involved in the delivery of service in the Kimberley region for over 30 years. During this time, I have worked at all levels across government and non-government agencies and Aboriginal organisations from administration to chief executive officer. It is hard to discuss a 30-year time frame in a short amount of time, but I will share with you some of my many milestones. My first employment as a 17-year-old public servant was in 1977, employed by then the Department of Harbour and Lights at the Broome Port, where I worked for five years as a clerk. At 17 years old, it was daunting, working my first job in an office full of only men. Lucky for me, the other staff were all local men who I was familiar with, so I got on really good. <laughs> it was there I met my husband, a Torres Strait Islander, a pearl diver, Lenny Pet, and together we have four children and four granddaughters. I then went on to work for the Department for Community Services. It's, it's really funny, on Monday at lunch here at the um, dining room there, I met a lady by the name of Kat K. O'Halloran, and she was the minister at that time, and that's going back 30 years ago. It was really, really great to see her again and, and have it talk to her. Anyway, so I started off as a family support officer and then worked my way up to an acting team leader. Here is where I got my first insight in the many issues that risk families, and in particular Aboriginal families, faced on a daily basis. I worked at that department for 15 years. During this time, the department changed its name several times, but to the Aboriginal people, it was always known as the Department of Native Welfare, responsible for taking kids away, and that was 80s, 90s, and they still thought that that department still took kids away. Seeing the disadvantage of families and the support that they needed sparked my interest in Aboriginal affairs, and I knew I wanted to be more involved in helping my people. In 1999, I resigned from the department, and it happened to be the same year as the election for the Atsi Kalari Regional Council, which I decided to run for. I got elected to the council and then was successful in my nomination for being the chairperson. At 39 years old, at that time, I, find my, I found myself in a familiar setting that I was in when I was 17. I was the only woman in the room again. I was the only female chairperson in, this, in the state of WA alongside 12 men, which included eight other male chairperson persons and four male commissioners. I was not a scared 17-year-old anymore, and being the only, room, only female in the room did not scare me this time, and I completed my term as the chair. In 2008, I was the coordinator of Kimberley Stolen Generation the same year that the then Prime Minister, at the time Kevin Rudd, apologised to the First Nations people, a significant moment of time for our nation. Thirteen years later, I'm still wondering where to from here regarding the apology. This is just to name a few points of my working life. In addition to this, I've also worked tirelessly in health, space, native title, education, justice, youth and employment programs. I tell you all this hoping that you find comfort in knowing. Gee, come on, paper. That my whole career has been built while working on the ground with people. Whether it be health or employment challenges, or whether it be women and family issues, or whether it be dealing with land and youth, 
or whether it be just justice system or education. Okay, I'll better have some water. <laughs> I will take the lessons that I have learned from the ground up and I will never forget that at the end of the day, us politicians are here for our people and we must work together with our people to help us to tackle the issues that we face every day. I stand for transparency and accountability within our greater communities, but I must advise in particular, I stand for my Aboriginal community, who have been calling out for some time regarding the ostracization, ostr ostracization and lack of proper and true accountability for their communities. People who have no voice are bullied and oppressed by the very entities that are supposed to represent them on the ground. Therefore, I'm looking forward to working with the Honourable John Quigley, Attorney General, Minister for Electoral Affairs, Honourable Alana McTiernan, Minister for Regional Development, Honourable Stephen Dawson, MLC, Minister for Mental Health and Aboriginal Affairs, and of course the many other members of Parliament, including our Premier, in being leaders in straightening this spear for a, for a precise hit in getting things right in our WA state. There needs to be a focused energy in, into community organisation when the silent voices call. I nominated for the MLA, Kimberley Seaton was unsuccessful. I was then asked if I would be interested in the upper house mining and power electorate ticket at number four. I accepted knowing that there's no way of me getting elected this term. It was a long shot of that ever happening for a number four getting elected. Mm -hmm. I was actually looking forward to the next term of election. However, as I watched the election updates and results throughout the day with anticipation, I was very surprised perhaps more shocked than anything. Reality finally sunk in and I had actually been elected. Later, I was told that I am to be the first Aboriginal person ever elected to the Upper House in a WA Parliament. What a great honour this bestowed upon me by the election results. Today, I take my place as the first Aboriginal person elected to this House as a proud Kimberley Aboriginal woman. It is fitting that I, that I get to be sworn in and to give my first speech during the celebration of National Reconciliation Week and National Sorry Day. And I would like to think that my place here is the proof of the possibilities for my people. And having said that, I will use my platform to promote and raise the profile of Aboriginal Torres Strait Island women voices to the parliament and all issues that affect my Aboriginal Torres Strait Island community and the community in general. I would also like to take to say this to all you young Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander women out there wanting to make a difference. The best seat in the house is in the back. It's there that you get to look, listen and learn and never be in a hurry to get to the top. This is the best advice given to me by my dad and the same advice I gave to my children. This, that advice or this advice led me to where I am today. It took me a while and here I am, creating history. I guess it was meant to be. We live in this beautiful state we call home. We are pretty lucky. It's the best and safe place to be right now. No place like home. Then again, WA has always been unique and we West Australians always do things differently. Looking forward to playing my role in this great place as there are many issues that we, the West Australian people, have yet to overcome. I know I do not need to name them. Our people know what is ahead of us and I am sure they are sick of us politicians telling them things they already know. Even though the Premier and this government has done a wonderful job of keeping us safe during the coronavirus, let us not forget the many other important issues that need to be adhered to that also affect WA people's lives. Living in survival in all sectors of our WA state equitably. I cannot express the motivation I feel and anticipation I built up to take my seat and support the WA Labour Party to work together with our constituents and pave a better and brighter future for the next generation. My life has been blessed with some wonderful people over the years and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the following people for their support and encouragement. Joe Grundy, Dr. Mark and Tanya Ben Barker, Greg Tate, Julie Cobb, 
Irene Stainton, Robin Stacey, Susan Bowles, Gemma Lawford, Joan Lane, Lexi Trankalina, and my cultural confidence, Mr. Kevin George, who's here today, and Mr. Donald Campbell. I would also like to acknowledge the support from the MUA. I recently made the decision to go into politics, but it was the MUA who saw the passion in me and went out of their way to advocate for my pre-selection. In particular, Sanaria bin Sahari, thank you. The Honourable Carl McGinn, the Assistant State Secretary Jeff Castle, and the State Tri Secretary Will Tracy. To my family, my Sahana Pitt family, my children, Koiki, Tilly, BJ, Kalpa, and my grandchildren, Lene, Mireya, Iman, and Zoe. My nephews, whom I raised, Tunnel, Clinton, Arnold, Warren, and my brothers, Ray and John Hamilton. Thank you all for your unconditional love, your support, encouragement, and for putting up with this old girl. You certainly keep me on my toes. You're the reason why I do what I do, why I wake up every morning with a smile on my face. You're the air that I breathe and the wind beneath my wings. Love you all, to the moon and back. I finally say to all members of the WA Parliament, please respect me. My advice, recommendations, and suggestions, and to utilize me for the many years of experiences I have in making WA a greater place in particular in Aboriginal Affairs. It is a great honour that I am part of this group which is made up of people from very diverse, diverse background and from all over WA. I am confident this will help us to work collectively in ensuring all representations of West Australian people. West Australian people's voice, views are brought to the table when we discuss issues affecting Western Australia. Having said that, please do not take me for the token black woman in this room. As the first Aboriginal person elected to this house, I want to set an achievable and superior standard for the next Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander generation that will take their seat in this house after me. I have a lot to offer my constituent and in my portfolio as member for the Mining and Pastoral Electorate and to the WA Parliament. May we be guided by our collective honesty, passion, and commitment to making WA a transparent and accountable state. I am looking forward to working with this successful team. Thank you, President. Thank you, Honourable Member, and I'd also like to take this opportunity on behalf of us all to acknowledge the milestone of the election and your first speech of the first Indigenous member in this chamber. You're very welcome.